Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Wednesday, May 23rd. Michael Boutros here with you this morning. Great to be here, guys. Aurelian, Jaya, Mark, all three Pete's in the house, Pooja, Ziad, great to see you guys. So we got some developments, right? Uh, some commentary out of Trump. Look, you can't plan for this kind of stuff. Um, and that's why we use stop. So I haven't been in anything per se. I did re-enter on an Aussie position. And I think it's worth a shot, the weekly open defense here is support. But look, the dollar still has a little bit more room uh, within the range of this resistance region, right? We highlighted this yesterday. We've been talking about it since the start of the week. You're basically looking at like, uh, what is it, 93.85 into 94.20 from the weekly chart. That's really the big, big level. Uh, we kind of turned from there right early in the week and it looked pretty good. All things held constant, that's still the resistance region we're looking for. So um, basically the commentary came out that uh, two things, A, that the North Korean meeting or the summit is sort of on shaky ground, there's some pessimistic view um, that he alluded to. And the second thing was that there was no deal on the China trade deal yet. And uh, markets have since spilled lower, um, you know, looking at, <laughs> it's interestingly enough, looking at the S&P 500, and this is what the um, charts look like here. I'll segue real quick. You know, we were at resistance, okay? 27.36 into 27.44 is the level that we were watching for a while. Some former pivot lows, pivot highs, pivot highs, um, and a median line. And even on the near-term chart, it was a region of which we were just looking for resistance. You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, okay? At the end of the day, the commentary may have triggered the downfall, but price was at resistance. What you have to keep in mind is a psychological barrier here. When markets have run up in such a fashion, you know, you're looking for basically any excuse to go ahead and offload some positioning and take some profits. And that's basically what's happening here. Is it a broader shift? Again, I, I don't think anything here has necessarily changed our broader opinion. Could see further losses with the break of the, of the 50 line here, obviously. So for the S&P, you know, we probably still have a little further to go before you're, you know, in concern about any major reversal in trend or anything. Um, so I digress, you know, that's a quick look at where we are in risk, but um, keep things in uh, sort of all in perspective. Uh, as far as the DXY is concerned, that's still resistance. Here's what it looks like on the daily charts and the intraday. Okay, the former swing highs from back here. It was a really nice pivot. Break you saw acceleration was support. Break acceleration was resistance. That level, again, 94.27 converges on the median line. So you could still see another probe there. Obviously, we've been talking about the fact we've been waiting for daily momentum to come back below over uh, bought conditions as long as this holds. You know, any, any type of positioning that we take on it needs to be very, very nimble, right? So I'm, take, I'm trading literally like a quarter leverage on this position. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, um, you know, look for 94.27 resistance. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Right? This is the objective range highs for the week. So again, I don't want to get ahead of myself and start getting at, at a, you know, all excited for further dollar advances. Yeah, I could probably still probe into 94.27, but resistance is resistance, momentum, although, you know, turned right here, suggesting that we're still broadly in the constructive momentum pattern. Um, you know, I wouldn't put it past this thing to go back, test, even former trigger support as resistance and then come off. At the end of the day, we're just looking for a lower high. So here's what it looks like on the 60 minute. And here's the 30. Right? So we'll see. We'll see. We'll get a definitive move, I think, here early in the U.S. session, uh, guys, if this is going to continue to carry over, see the further dollar advances. Interestingly enough, just performance gauge on the day, you have the yen as the top performer, 0. Uh, 85% on the upside. Sterling's the worst performer. We got really uh, weaker across the board CPI data. I mean, uh, everything was weaker than expected. Month on month, year on year, the whole figure. So Sterling took another turn lower or continued to press further lower. And you're seeing that haven flow, right? Gold saw a pop earlier in the session. You know, we've come off since. Um, but I still think, you know, even on that trade, you're still within broadly the weekly range. I still think you reach into 1300, 1301. But you know, the Haven flow, it it's not still evident whether that's going to hold or not. Again, I think this could be a little bit overdone. 
We'll see how the U.S. markets open. Look for resistance in the DXY heading to 94.27. Any questions? I knew we just threw a lot at you right there, so <laughs> let me know if there's any questions. But um, you know, commentary like this, guys, you're never going to be able to foresee this kind of stuff. So let me just jump into um, last night's update, and then we'll go over the majors. Someone in the room here was asking about Pound Aussie, and I was looking at this last night. Uh, I, was it was it George? Was that you? Um, for the Pound Aussie trade, and I thought I'd give you an update on this. Some levels to keep on the downside. Um, we had gone over this in the webinar yesterday, and we threw together uh, some levels here. Peter, that was you. He says me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was thinking about you when when I was writing this because. Uh, I know that we were talking in the webinar. I kind of told you to hold on to that short position because I think there's further downside. There are some major levels that you want to be paying attention to uh, on near-term approach. If you're still holding that, still looks good. I haven't changed my opinion. Um, 176.50, you're approaching that level now. You're about 25 pips I am. Uh, he says I am, rather. Uh, awesome, Pete. Nice hold, man. Uh, I, it rebounded a little bit yesterday. I was hoping you wouldn't get sh shaken out of that. V very nice hold. 76.50, okay, is going to be a former swing high, decent pivot in price. The other thing is slope, okay? The parallel, well, let me take you to the weekly chart first. Here's the weekly chart. The parallel for the broader slope that we've been following, this larger pitchfork, okay? If you take a, a, a parallel of that and extend it off the late highs that we made in 2017, it literally practically caught this year's high on the pullback if you take a parallel from that extending off that low from this year you know you're kind of there so some levels to watch for in the weekly close basis that's what to look for on the daily close basis same thing okay that's basically what i was showing you earlier we're the, kind of still about 20 pips away at this point on the intraday it's really interesting and yesterday, I think in the webinar, I was showing you just a basic parallel of that resistance off the lows. If you actually take it more as a wedge type of formation, the downside break of this could see some real acceleration if we get it, Peter. But the first thing's first, 75.75 into 76.12. It's a little hidden region there, just below 76.50. On the drop, watch for a reaction here. If this is really going to break, I want to see acceleration. You have a three-point touch support trigger now. Okay, so again, down slope break should see acceleration. Momentum is going to be an oversold by the time we get there if it does push through. So it might be a really nice move, Pete. Um, you know, at this point, stops above 78 would be comfort for me. Um, I can't recall if you told me your entry or not, but, you know, if you're holding it from anywhere above the weekly open, I think you're all right with the break even. But if you want to be a little bit more protective, 78 would be your line in the sand, the high that we just made, beautiful reversal. And if we get through this, you know, there's a very nice confluence region just lower, right here. Gives you another, what, 130 pip range to go for the downside? at 74.70 into 74.60, okay? You got the 200-day moving average. Really nice pivot in price specifically on this pair. Resistance, break, acceleration. Support, support, break, acceleration. Boom, boom, right? That converges on the 38-2 retracement of the entire advance from 2016. So just to put things in perspective for you, okay? Uh, he says 79.60. Okay, so you got a really nice entry on that. So, you know, it depends how aggressive you want to get it. If, you're, if you'd be willing to sit this out for a rally, like, back up towards that parallel, it's going to take, take out, you know, another 100 pips of profit. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's cool to have a break even stop or even a stop above the weekly open. For me, I kind of pull it into here, uh, take my profits. If it gets backed up there and you still like it, there's no problem to re-enter. But for me, um, <clears throat> you know, just bring the stop in, in my opinion, and watch for a reaction here. You really want to see this accelerate, like I said, uh, for this to get any juice on the downside. So if Aussie corrects higher, as I'm hoping, uh, that's also going to further help you propel this a little bit lower in pound Oz. Pete, does that help? So those levels from yesterday, man, just keep keep an eye on them. He says, great, thanks. Hey, you're more than welcome, man. Keep an eye on these levels. They're pretty clear. Pretty clear. All right. So I know an interesting pair. Um, <laughs> I didn't even have a link to the previous update because it was like back in 
uh, early February, I think. So, um, yeah, I know it's an expensive pair to trade, but certainly from a technical structure, it looks good. So that's pound Oz. That's number two. Uh, number three, Swissy. So I know Jamie's got an entry on this uh, as far as the uh, swing trades are concerned. You know, nothing as far as what's been going on today necessarily puts a dent in this. It still looks all right. Now, momentum is starting to ease pretty hard here, which I'm not really a fan of. Hey, D, good morning. Uh, great to see you. Um, always a pleasure. But uh, for Swissy guys, you know, the area of which we turned on the weekly chart was super interesting. Yeah, that was pretty clean at 10040, 10090. I know it's a 60 pip range, bigger range, but or 40 pip range. Um, but you know, just really nice symmetry to it. So uh the pullback here is what we're studying. And the first area where we could find a little bit of bounce, unsurprisingly, is twofold. You got the monthly open for May. Monthly open comes in at 90. Uh, 964 and then you got the objective monthly opening range lows and that gets you 98 uh, basically the 99 handle and you can see it's exactly where we bounced a little here so I don't think it necessarily dissuades anything from the broader trade you could see a larger rebound sure um, all things held constant I still think this thing has a little lower you know just missed um, the second target first move was the, obviously the May open. We highlighted that 9908. The next move was into 99, uh, 9882, excuse me. And again, the low we made was 9894. So about eight pips off there. We'll see if this turns or not, but you're still looking lower below the objective weekly open really nice confluence there with basic upper parallel resistance. Now, even if you get a rally, start to look for failure here in the ideal scenario. On a bigger recovery, that's kind of my max. I wouldn't want to see that move any higher if our interpretation is correct. Um, downside targets unchanged, 98.82. You know, just a nice 1618 extension. The bigger level is right here. You know, the 2018, um, you know, opening range highs. Basic slope support off the yearly lows, and a very simple and objective 236 retracement of the yearly range. All that converges right here. So even within the confines of the downslope, okay, even a closer view here, they converge right here. All right, so again, it's it's going to be up to the U.S. trade session here to see if um, you know you get any follow through on some of this risk off uh, type of uh, behavior that we're seeing in the markets on the back of some of these comments. You know, it's notorious. The stuff with the trade disputes guys are always kind of knee-jerk reactions. And like I said at the beginning of the webinar, when markets have run up like this, they kind of look for an excuse to, to sell off. Not surprised. The tell is whether it's going to be a catalyst for some sort of larger correction. As of now, uh, we don't quite have evidence to back up that notion. Questions on Swissy? So an update there last night um, <clears throat> from last week's move. And last but not least from last night, we have Euro Aussie, uh, another one that we covered here in the webinar yesterday as well. And that one, you know, we were talking about this earlier in the year on the on the push into this big resistance region. And we had a week where this thing was really pushing higher. And I thought this was just going to completely rip. Uh, we stalled there for a while, didn't know what to do. Once we started to crack, things looked very interesting on the near-term charts. Here's what the daily chart looks for. Uh, the break was 58.83. That's what kind of set the onset. We tested as resistance and it's been a shot to the downside ever since. We were talking about this in the webinar yesterday and it was similar to the scenario as, as pound Oz, right? Uh, little more room to go to the downside before you run to resistance. Kind of still want to look lower while below 56.22, right? That last um, high day reversal close, really nice outside day uh, from last year converged right on the median line and what a clean median line it's been. So even if we correct higher, that's kind of where you want to see things stall. Ultimately, we're looking for 54.67 is what it looks like on the intraday chart yesterday. We we're noting that we were coming in some near-term support, okay, 54.98 to 54.67. That's sort of the sweet spot. Near-term resistance, 56. Again, ideal scenario, if this is going to hold this immediate decline, you look for resistance here. 
for the last drop. Well, here's what we look like now. Kind of playing right through uh, the levels like a fiddle. Okay, overshot the 56 handle by what? Six pips, seven pips to the upside, 10 pips to the upside. Uh, but you saw a quick reversal here in momentum at 60. This is another nice uh, Aussie long that we're in. Looks pretty good, right? You're a short Aussie long. Uh, looking for, you know, ideally you see this drill through resist uh, support here. Uh, if we're working under the assumption that this thing is going to make the stab into 54.67, again, you have a 200 day moving average, 1618 extension, right? On the near term, you have the 50 line for the current slope that we're following here. So that's sort of the ideal press, but I'll start to shave it off as we get towards these swing lows and bring the stops in. Um, but, you know, I've been trying to attack the Aussie. It just looks tired versus the dollar. It looks, it doesn't look like it, it's able to make a run. And with the dollar strength we're seeing today on the back of these comments, um, you know, I don't want to get too aggressive on overall broader Aussie exposure. Any questions on Euro Oz? The setup remains unchanged, okay? The levels are, are, are exactly the same from yesterday. We ran right into that 5606. That was the first level we want to see is resistance. Again, a little bit of an over and overshoot, uh, but there's the, there's the jackknife lower. Again, near-term momentum, you know, intraday momentum, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look healthy for, like, a kind of continued move. So if this levels out and really starts to make it back through some initial opening range highs for the U.S., it's not even worth it to kind of get aggressive. Just bail on it. Questions on Euro Oz. Another interesting Oz cross that we're following. Okay, that's number four. All right, the majors. Let's hit them. Uh, I might as well be, we might as well just start with Aussie dollar since we're here. Uh, here's what Aussie looked like earlier in the week. It played real nice with us. Got 100 pips plus on the close uh, with the rally into 76. Um, on the pullback, as I told you yesterday, we had brought our stops up, so I did get stopped up in the rest of that long position for the quarter of the trade. Here's the jackknife lower. Okay, whoa, boom. Weekly open support, 75.20. Kind of want to see that hold right now for this thing to work. If it breaks lower, 74.86, 74.84, the bigger region that we've been watching on the daily charts, the bigger region we've been watching on the weekly charts, it's all about that 74.80 level on a daily close basis. Haven't been able to make much progress below it. Well, if that breaks, that'll invalidate the idea of the head and shoulders formation, the wedge breakout targeting 77. That'll be invalidated completely if we break below 74.80. So again, I'm holding a little position here. It's not worth much. If we get a bounce, great. Uh, 75.65 would be just the first entry or the first exit. Uh, start shaving off positions there. If we break 75.20, I'm on the sidelines. Let's see what happens near 74.80. It's our last line in the sand. Questions on Aussie? Keep in mind, later in the U.S., you do get some composite PMI data that could move the dollar around as well. But it's really the market uh, risk appetite sort of as we head into the into the open to see if that's going to carry over. I think Asia might have gone a little heavy on some of these comments from from Trump. OK. Any questions on the Aussie dollar? Still. You know, even if it breaks down, it's still a very clean setup. So I'm going to continue to track this one, probably the closest, guys. You can clean this chart up a little bit. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Here's the 120. So feel free to take a snapshot of this if you want uh, for future reference today. But we'll see how this starts to pan out, how it starts to react into the U.S. Open. Okay, that's number five. While we're on the Aussie, and that's the fourth, third uh, Aussie cross, let's just do one more uh, because it saw a huge move yesterday. Um, and that's Aussie yen. Look at this thing. 
complete collapse breakdown. So it took out the weekly open, took out the weekly opening range, took out 83.44, 83.34. Remember, this range was our bullish invalidation uh, level. The weekly open and the weekly opening range lows in last week's high. All was contained in this 10 pip region. Once that gave out, sayonara, you're no longer bullish. So 82.95 got taken out with a swoosh. Look for initial resistance there. Um, but, you know, watch out below. This was. Um, a pretty abrupt and big break. Here's what the daily chart looks like on Aussie N. Look at this thing. I mean, come on. The last upside target, and we were looking for exhaustion, was 84.71. Uh, the high fizzled out at 84.48. I mean, it just couldn't get any more steam above that. Perfect touch. I think we talked about this yesterday. It was just too clean. Um, and then obviously your risk off, you're the epitome of the risk off, risk on trade. Do you guys know what we mean when we say risk on, risk off trade? Uh, just, just for the, just for the record, kind of that, 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 uh, traders want to dump yields, right? They look, they look to dump assets that are higher yielding to move into the relative safety of lower yielding assets, i.e. bonds. You'll see gold get higher, you'll see dollar get higher, you'll see yen rally. Um, you know, if you go way back, Swissy used to be a much more prominent uh, risk off thing. That was all before the peg, though. The last couple of years hasn't really, you know, exhibited that kind of behavior. But um, so the Aussie yen is sort of the epitome of that in that you have the highest or one of the higher yielding currencies and the yen. Right. Also the carry trade. Right. That sit that that seek uh, for yield to go long Aussie N, right? Long the higher yielding asset, short the lower yielding asset, that starts to unwind. So usually when you see really strong risk off sells or really strong downturns in equities, um, usually the Aussie N will be a really nice play and you're seeing that today. Now, obviously this kind of is changing things for me. I don't want to touch this right now, but I did want to bring it to your attention. The ideal scenario was that this thing would break down and find some support right here in this region and start to mount some sort of counteroffensive. This Complete breakdown, um, you know, I don't want to touch. Here's Aussie N on the weekly charts. Right? If it was going to turn, that was the spot. Again, 84.71 was the top end of that resistance range. And, you know, that's not a very bullish weekly candle if it closes at these levels. So, a word of caution on the Aussie N. Uh, I know that we were following that. And I kind of just wanted to give you a heads up. Here's what Aussie N look like. Okay, we started the day, we started the week talking about resistance here, looking for the pullback to get long if we were going to pull back in Aussie. The breach kept on looking higher, kept on looking higher. That was the final region, and we turned right ahead of that. So use caution here. Let me just update this actually. Okay, so nestled lower is the Friday or last week's swing low from here, the 50 line, and just lowers the 618, the entire range advanced from March. So 8202, 8217, this 15 pip zone right here would be your next sort of zone of interest on the way down. Um, I'm not really a fan of this. But the weekly open is right there as well. So I would still be looking for resistance somewhere around that 83.34, 83.44. Same zone. Um, that was our bullish inbound. Look for resistance there. 
you can dump the April open, and the 786 looks good. It's going to be a secondary target if this continues to break down. Again, I have no interest in chasing this, guys, but I just wanted to highlight the levels um, for everyone, anyone who might be might be involved here. Questions on Aussie N? That is number six. Okay. Euro. <clears throat> so we're probing the lows again. Uh, you got some manufacturing data that was kind of weak as well. Um, and here we go, right? So look, 117.09. We're just below it right now. Um, the daily close here matters. This is another one where it's very precarious. You know, if you're holding shorts, trail it. If you're looking for fresh exposure, look elsewhere. Uh, that's just my opinion here on Euro for now. Um, it's just you're probing a big, big region. You know, the thing has been bearish obviously since the break of 2167, but uh, you know, trying to chase this from here, I know we feel like you're missing out, but there's just no effective trade on the short side. Um, and again, with DXY where it is, it, it could be a head fake. Okay, keep in mind that DXY hasn't broken to a new high. Interestingly enough, just really near-term stuff here. DXY hasn't broken to a new high, while the euro dollar has broken to a new low. So a lot of times, those are kind of exhaustion trades as well. Just something. Uh, some food for thought there, but yeah, I mean, there's no trade here. You're either looking for some sort of near-term downside exhaustion for a recovery, or if it breaks, it's just, it's going to be a downside break of a descending channel. It's just going to accelerate further. And again, there's no way to effectively play this. So we're still wait and see on Euro, unfortunately. You know, if anything, the Euro Oz trade looks a little bit cleaner in, in my opinion. Um, but those levels effectively need to clear 118.27. Same thing since the start of the week uh, to get this thing going. Questions on Euro? Here's what it looks like on the daily. Right, it's probing a big spot here. Probing a big spot. It's turn or burn for Euro and DXY for that matter. That is number seven. Okay, I guess we better address the elephant in the room. <laughs> Um, pound is just having a rough time, man. It's, uh, you know, all we can do is just continue to highlight the next support target. It's kind of like, there's no recoveries. There's no, uh, back and forth. There's no back and fill. It's, it's, uh, it's rarity when you get these kinds of moves, but in pound and specifically in some of the crosses, some of the behavior of them, once they do this, you kind of just need to sit it out if you're not in it. Okay. Near-term target, 133. That was the next level down beyond 3464. Uh, Remember, 3464, 35 on the daily charts, that was everything for pound. Ever since this break here, which turned us uh, strongly bearish, uh, this was the all that we've been focused on. We haven't been able to do anything for weeks as this thing just bobbled along the yearly open, the yearly opening range lows, and a basic 38.2 retracement of the 2017 advance. Here's the break. We talked about this yesterday. We were just drifting below here. You know, as I said, on the downside break like that, you kind of want to see acceleration. You didn't get it. The fake out. And as price was dwindling or holding just below that resistance level, the event risk is all the catalyst you need to charge the next move. Sterling had already broken support before we got that CPI data. CPI data just helped accelerate, helped offer the catalyst to see price action start to move. So to cover the numbers real quick, you got consumer price index month over month, looking for 0 0.5, printed at 0 0.4. Year over year, year, over year you're looking for 2.5, printed at 2.4. Um, you have to take core CPI prices. You were looking for 2.2, 2, 
came in at 2.1. House price index, you were looking for 4.4, came in at 4.2. I mean, this thing just missed on every single print today. So not surprising, right? Momentum was still an oversold on a daily uh, daily standpoint. Yeah, you know, we, it was kind of a tell in price. I guess you could say that yesterday you posted kind of a doji right here. You tried to break in resistance. You failed. You closed right at the open uh, price for that day. And that's really, you know, kind of a bearish price action development. So here's Sterling on the way down. You know, the December lows, again, comes in right here at 133. You got the lower median line parallel just lower. Okay, so you can see this thing still 132.80s wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility but would not want to be chasing fresh shorts from here. Okay, downside break of a near-term descending thing. I mean, this thing's just not catching any breathers, guys. Again, look at this channel that was holding for a couple of weeks. Topside break, you saw a test of support. Okay, that's kind of where you want to see the launching point. Failure at the highs, touching the 38.2. Failure at the highs, touching the 38.2. It has no juice in it. So... If you put a gun to my head, 133 would be a level I'd say start to bail, look for a little bit of a bounce. As far as positioning, the long side is just foolish here at this point. We have no, um, you know, there's just nothing here to really turn us bullish yet. Oops. Still deep in oversold territory on every single time frame. Okay, forget this now. You don't need this. Hmm. Tough days for the pound. Objective break of the weekly opening range. Here's a really good lesson, guys, and I just noticed this right now. Very, very objective type of analysis. Here's your weekly open. This is why I highlight uh, the weekly open on every chart, why I put that bar there, why I take the time to go through every chart and, and kind of mark that up. This is when I, so I can look at it, I'm looking to jump into a trade real quick, I can get a really quick picture. A couple of different indicators that kind of will pop right out into my face. Here's your weekly open. That's your weekly opening range highs. You pull back, you test the weekly opening range highs, it holds. You test the opening range lows, you're kind of starting to make higher lows here. It's consolidation. That break objectively has us looking for a late week low. So Thursday, Friday low is basically what you're looking for here in pound dollar. That being said, support is support. 133 is your first level um, to start to look for some sort of reaction in price. Questions on sterling? Anyone involved here? Clean this up a little. And let me just see what this looks like real quick. I think it's already out. Hmm. Huh. Resistance, acceleration, support, support, break, acceleration. Uh, where's the 50 line in this? Same one that we have on the daily chart? Yeah, same one daily chart. All right. Let's see what happens down here. Okay, questions on pound. That is number eight. Okay, a quick look at uh, gold. And guys, feel free to throw out any questions or trade setups that you want to cover. Uh, here's what what's going on with gold. So we talked about gold and the bounce that were at least that, that near-term support at 1285 to start off the week. We got the bounce, right? It worked out really well. You went through the weekly open. It seems, again, we have to see how this pans out, but this was the target on this. If we break back below 1285, you know, you're looking right back at a continuation of this broader downtrend that we've been in from the highs of the year. Next downside target, by the way, is all the way down 1263. Here's the daily chart. So it's quite risky if we make a, a, a break of the lows. All things held constant, you're still looking for support 1285. All things held constant, you're still looking for that bounce near 13. Um, 
you know, nothing really changes. You're still basically kind of ranging. This is basically unchanged for the weekly open here, right? So you made a low, you made a high, tried to break the lows, couldn't try to break the highs. This is counting as failure in my book. Here we go. So don't get faked out on this move yet. It's it's this knee-jerk reaction to this data that you get where you kind of really need to be mindful not to fall with the crowd sort of psychology here. Uh, glad you're covering the yen pairs. Could you dial us up on your views with a chart on your yen? I always appreciate your uh, help. So Kelly, I saw your tweet. We appreciate that, man. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. You're probably better off going with Jamie on euro yen. I haven't really been following it as closely. The break below 29.38 is big for me. Um, it's one of those trades, again, where, you know, if you asked me, I would have been looking at this consolidation here below the 50, that break, how are you going to get into it? Um, I know that you're already in, in this trade. I don't know if you're still holding it, Kelly, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big break. I can't chase. I can't chase. You're marking divergence on the daily chart. You know, this is not a, a pair I uh, indulge in. But that said, I'll always give you my honest opinion. So bear with me a second. Let's see what's going on here. So aside from a break of the lower median line parallel, <clears throat> it's the first test. So I don't know how much emphasis I want to put on it. This slope has been obviously huge for us for over a year. Um, and even on the break of the median line, things have just been pretty, pretty sour ever since. This break, um, you know, again, it objectively just clears or is attempting to break below this formation. Now, this swing low was the previous yearly opening range low for March. Again, we tested it, found really strong reversal rebound, tested it again this month, really strong rebound. This is pretty big. Um, you know, what do you do with that? Let's see here. Hmm. Hey, Kelly. Okay, so you're in this for a longer term position. Kelly says he's looking for 25 area. Okay. Um, yeah, I haven't really been following along, but if you're if you're looking for 25, well, that would be a good spot with slope here. Okay, keep in mind this is the 2015 low week reversal close. I do like where we turned. I mean, this was just so sweet right here. 52 week moving average, slope. Push lower. Yeah, look, I mean, you could see a little bit back and forth, back and fill here in this region. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if we spend some time here, but all things held constant. Um, does look pretty good. Ahead of 125, though, you know, just watch the basic swing highs here and that 38 too, because it lines up pretty nicely with the swing lows that you made for uh, 2015 in general. So just ahead of that tw uh, 25 area, just keep an eye area on that. But um, for what it's worth, that's what I'd be looking at. Uh, he says, I appreciate it. Uh, and damn, I like that I can tweet a question, ask for guidance, and you and Jamie always reply. Love that. Kelly, cheers. We try to make ourselves available as possible. Um, obviously, I'm with you here for an hour a day, so you can always pick my mind. I'm always willing to uh, give you my opinion. Uh, he says, Jamie's chart was perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, guys, uh, as always, like I said, feel free to throw any other questions here. But uh, for that gold trade, um, 1285, right? 
1285. That's still going to be the support level that you need to keep in mind. It's coming out pretty hard here. Aussie, meanwhile, is actually starting to show a little bit of legs here. Doesn't look encouraging. <laughs> Uh, when it takes that long to kind of mount a reversal, what you want to see is, you know, usually that's what you see. See this? You see something like this? And you want to see a strong reversal and a thrust higher, but on the opposite side. So see if it's going to give us any kickback here, but um, you know, we'll, we'll choke that stop to break even pretty quick if we clear the highs for uh, for futures markets here. All right, any other questions, guys? That's everything I had on my list at Euro Yen that we covered for Kelly here. Pete says SPX. So, Pete, here's the SPX chart uh, that we went over earlier in the session. This is what I've been following for days. Again, and this is why it kind of just blows my mind, um, the headlines that you read sometimes. It's so misleading, guys. You know, make sure that you're kind of just watching price and staying close to it because people can kind of make all kinds of different assumptions. Price was at resistance, 27.36, 27.44. We've been watching that as the same exact level that we peaked out here. Um, and certainly here's the pullback. So this is initial support. Uh, Pete, bullish invalidation up here or down here rather. So even if we break lower, I wouldn't start panicking. Uh, you know, I'd still be looking for uh, more of a support hold. Now, just for argument's sake, if we do break that low, just real quick. Okay, bear with me. I know this is messy. Just going to make this obnoxious for a second. Two things and a basic 30. Ah, it doesn't help us at all. And the highs are exactly equal. So, you know, again, the risk, and I hate to kind of like make assumptions like this, but conservative measured move would risk 26.65. Okay, for your quote unquote double top formation, that only materializes with a break below this. So, obviously, that's a way of ascertaining bias to give us uh, some sort of indication on, on, on direction. It is not a way to get into the position. So just from an objective price action standpoint, if we were to break uh, 27 here, it basically would suggest that there's a larger, larger pullback at play towards 2665. That being said, I'd still be looking for some sort of reaction here. Just the, the slope looks pretty decent. You know, even if you take some of these highs, boom, 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 boom. Pete says, great, thank you. Hey, hey Pete, uh, cheers, man, for what it's worth. That's, it's just, it's, an, it's a very clean level of where we turned at. So, you know, that's the only argument I'm making. <laughs> not surprised to see a pullback, but I'm not panicking yet. It's just a pullback at upslope resistance. Again, we made a breach of a lot of different levels, really nice hold of a long-term parallel. It's uh, still within that range, right? Mark says, hi, Mike, please take a look at dollar CAD. Sure. SPX is on there and dollar CAD. So, oh yeah, that thing ripped, right? Uh, I think I looked at this morning. I, uh, yeah. So look, remember how we were talking about this slope? We covered dollar CAD earlier this week. Ah. Okay. As I said, it was too early to rely on this slope uh, too kind of aggressively, but it basically helped us call the lows. Remember that. We came all into the start of the week. This thing started breaking down. We said, watch 27.63. That's going to be our line in the sand. If we break below that, it would clear this near-term consolidation and would really fuel a nice drop. I mean, a measured move just on an initial approach, guys, would have been a conservative target at 26.55. I was pretty confident on that. Um, but we didn't break. You know, at the end of the day, we didn't break. Sure, you might have gotten faked out here. Um you know, not that there was a responsible entry or a stop to have against if even if this were to break, but on the recovery, this was our only and kind of only option, only chance 
uh, for this tray to work. It held there for a good, what, eight hours, four hours, uh, and then we just plowed through yesterday. So look, it's done. This is obviously a null and void formation. If this is kind of a false break to this triangle and we're going to see upside acceleration, you'd want to see that start to happen here. Otherwise, you're just checking range highs here. Highs, 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 all the same region, highs, right? So put a gun to my head, Pete, and I'd be looking for for exhaustion. I guess like I'm the fade guy. That's just what I do. But look, you know, it's not a very encouraging area to be bullish, right? Again, if we were to close a daily close above this, sure, I'm with you. Look for the extension towards 29.96. That's the next logical target. It's your high for the for the month. It's your slope resistance, yada, yada, right? But the last three times we've attempted this, things haven't worked out too well. <laughs> so, um, you know, objectively, you'd be looking for another pullback here. This might have no merits to it. Remember, this only has two-point touch. That might have been convincing, but this should see acceleration. So I'm going to even dump that. Don't even pay attention to that right now. Same thing with this, right? Look at it objectively. I always try to break things down and kind of keep things as objective as possible. Simple range highs, simple range lows, simple range highs, simple range lows, etc. Now, at some point when it breaks, it's going to give you an upside extension or a downside extension, obviously depending on the range. And the levels are well mapped out on both sides, 29.97 on the upside, 27 on the downside. Uh, till the range breaks, though, play the range. Mark, any questions on Looney? Keeping in mind where we are in the broader theme, the reason we were favoring playing the short side scalps, even on intraday basis in general, was because of where this is on the weekly chart even. Basic slope, we've covered this multiple times from 2012, has defined every major turn uh, in the pair for years. The last couple of months have been very precarious. We've straddled in on both sides. But for the last month and a half, weekly pushes through this have been unable to close above. So inherently for me, I've been favoring just any, you know, radical upside in dollar cat to fade. So that might be an opportunity right now in, in, in Looney, to be honest with you. He says, thanks, I'm playing the range. Yeah, <laughs> man, if I was uh, if I was in a position on dollar cat, that's exactly what I'd be doing. Real tight, though, real tight, because if the risk off again, if the risk off trade really takes hold, uh, dollar strength could really keep this thing higher. Okay, any other crosses, pairs, assets, or trades you would like to review, feel free. Take a quick visit at Aussie, see how we're doing there. Pretty pitiful. Let's see if we can't get a move. All right. All right, okay, guys, we'll wrap it up there. Quick reminder, obviously, the uh, midweek strategy webinar got moved back to tomorrow. Uh, Donald Trump with a tweet here, by the way, just seconds ago. There will be big news coming soon for our great American auto workers after many decades of losing your jobs. To other countries, you will have waited long enough. Okay, some uh, cheerleading. A uh, quick reminder, obviously, the uh, midweek strategy webinar will be got pushed back to tomorrow. So uh, Jamie will be with you guys tomorrow. I will be out. Bring it back on Tuesday of next week for the webinars here on Daily FX. Keep in mind, guys, Monday is um, – it's not Labor Day. It's Memorial Day or vice versa. <laughs> it's a holiday on uh, on Monday. So U.S. markets will be closed. Um, and, again, thin market conditions will prevail. So just use some caution here heading into the weekend. If you do have any positions on, keep in mind it's an extended holiday weekend break in the States. And also, it's a shortened week. I mean, not shortened week next week. It is a shortened week next week, but um, this is the last final week of May trade. So a good time to, to scale back on leverage and trim any positionings heading into the extended holiday break, guys, to get those thin holiday conditions um, or thin trading conditions uh, at the holiday weekend that could offer a little bit more volatility spikes. So uh, be a little bit more on the defensive. All right. Best of luck trading, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Cheers.